Hi. Hey, I'm Webb Hunt. Uh, this is Campbell Cook, Aiden Nicewinder, and Otto Olsen. And we um, are the, a couple of students that run in Dada. And we just wanted to thank you all for coming out here tonight. Um, I also wanted to thank Ms. Flanagan and Ms. Vaughn for helping set this up and the bake, bake sales this year and for all of you, um, you know, putting the effort to bring in stuff because that's how we make our money to make this festival run. Um, and I also want to thank Kelly Dillon for being here tonight. Uh, you know, that's really, it's really awesome. So, I think you're all going to have a great time. You know, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Some stencil art. You guys want to say anything? I'll say something. Yeah, uh, we hope you guys enjoy and uh, excited to see some of the awesome art you guys make. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight, um, especially with this terrible weather. I know it is not easy to get out on a weekday night, let alone having it pouring down rain. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And um, thank you to our wonderful chairs, Jamie and Kendall, who I keep trying to say, you all need to get up and talk, because I don't want to talk. But thank you. You guys did a great job. Um, I'm so happy you're here. Thank yes. you. Thank all you, right. Kelly. Yeah, all right. Great. Great, great, great. And um, thank you, too, to the wine chap who provided, generously provided, again, all of this delicious wine for us tonight. Um, and all of the proceeds for this event go 100% toward Indata, which is the most amazing event. And the date again is when? April 27th. April 27th. It is awesome. It's so much fun. Um, so we hope that you all come out to that too. All right. So let's get started. For tonight, we are going to paint. We're going to play around. And I know a lot of these types of things will say, you're going to paint a masterpiece. You'll walk home with a Picasso that you can hang on your wall. Well, guess what? You might not tonight, but that's not, that is not the point. That is not my purpose. So my goal, what I hope for you tonight, is that you really, truly just enjoy yourself, have a good time, and most importantly, really get into that right brain. So I do this a lot for big corporate groups. I do it for... I did a huge group of IT people who were about 70, uh, really 85% men, and all looking at me like this, just mad that they, you know, had to have their phones taken away and they couldn't check their emails and text messages. But if you can really think about this as a massage for your brain, so think about, you know, how much what you would be willing to pay and the time that you would be willing to give to get a great massage or maybe get some foot reflexology or a pedicure or whatever it is. All those things that are kind of stimulating, getting the blood flowing to parts of your body physically that maybe need to get the blood flowing. Well, that is what you're doing for your brain. So you are getting a massage tonight. You're massaging the right hemisphere of your brain. So all of our brains have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. The right hemisphere is the one that is responsible, that is totally engaged when you're doing anything creative or artistic. So whether that is creating, like what you're doing tonight, whether it's playing music, listening to music, even doing sports, playing sports, the blood, neuroscientists have shown, so the blood rushes to that right side of your brain, you might be like, well, why is that important? Well, like anything, our bodies work a lot more successfully if they work holistically. So our society kind of dictates that we spend a whole lot of time in our left brain. And the left brain, which is a good thing, it's not, a, it's not that one is better than the other, it's just we could be more perhaps successful or happier or open up many more opportunities if we if the left and the right worked in harmony together. So the left brain is the part that maybe told you tonight, well, first of all, it allows you to function in society, which, you know, that's a pretty important thing. It allows you to get up on time, set your alarm, make the to-do list, read, you know, it, it thinks very linear, in a linear fashion from left to right. Um, so it allows you to basically exist, pay your bills, you know, be a functioning human in society. The right brain is often ignored, but the right brain is the part, so if you can think of it, the left brain lives in the past and in the future. The left brain is maybe the part of you that was telling you before you signed up, like, oh my God, I'm not an artist. I hate art. I failed art. I can't even draw a stick figure. I'm just going to go because I want to support the school. 
well, that's fine. <laughs> but your right brain is the part that I hope within about 20 minutes is going to be living in the present. The left is the past and the future. The right is engaged in the present. So the right brain is the part that actually gave you the guts and the, um, the energy to be like, yeah, sure, I don't know, I'll give it a try. What if? I don't know. What if, like, it, it, it's the whole picture. It gives you imagination. It allows you to brainstorm. And so again, when I do this for corporate groups, I, we really do bring it back to the office. Like, okay, after you've done this artistic engagement, whatever it is, now let's go back and brainstorm again. You know, problem A that we talked about before, you were painting or drawing or doing your watercolor. Let's do that. And now, after we've done that, let's revisit that same situation and see, do you have any other, um, thoughts about it. Like maybe you, it just, it opens up your mind. So if anything, again, I really don't want you guys to be like, oh my God, this is off. I'm going to throw it in the garage. Or like Kendall was saying, she's like, you realize most of these are going to be in the laundry room. Like, that's fine. I don't care. I really <laughs> just hope for you that this is, again, a massage for your brain. All right. And I'm going to make it really easy for you to do that because we're going to be doing abstract painting. So really, you can't go wrong because the beauty and freedom of abstraction is that it is not supposed to look like anything. Abstract art is an opportunity. And one reason we wanted to do abstract art is to bring in our guest artist from our fall um, art event here at MBA, Black Lorat. Did you guys all go to the exhibition. I mean, how cool. It was really, really pretty amazing that we had a renowned worldwide artist like that here on our campus. And so I don't, have you guys seen this? I actually had a friend of mine tell me, she's like, I'm not really sure about it. It kind of creeps me out. But I love it <laughs> because of the element of surprise. And it's just unexpected. And um, so he is, if, if Black Lorat is a graffiti street artist. Um, Banksy, his uh, you know, mentioned that he has been an inspiration for him. And he was quoted as saying that his art is designed to be little surprises to make people happy. So kind of keep that in mind and I'll, as I guide you along in your uh, abstract art tonight that you can add little surprises in your, amongst your colors, in your lines, in your splotches, and some of that can be done with stencils. So we are mixing, whoops, well, okay. So we are going to, those are kind of the two themes I want to mix, is like graffiti street art, which is freedom, like just go for it. But then if you want to try to kind of bring a little bit of unity to it, you can use our stencils. So we have two, those two long tables in the back are full of all sorts of different stencils, like dif different patterns. Um, some, most of them are just kind of abstract, but some of them are actual objects like a bird or a tree or a leaf or something like that. But uh, before I get into that, I was just going to show you, whoops, okay, so here are some examples just to kind of get your mind thinking about if you want to have an actual, some sort of uh, idea of your design in mind before you begin. So this could be something abstract. I mean, this is basically shapes, geometric shapes, lines, completing, completing your line to make a shape, circles, squares, etc. Um, you could do something like that, which I don't know, some people might think that's a tree, a house, or just more shapes, something like this. So again, it's abstract. It's not a specific thing. So these are all examples of lots of color and stencils layered upon stencils. Okay, so real quick, I want to do a crash course in color theory. <laughs> And there are some color wheels spread upon the um, desks here if you need to refer back to them. So if you can kind of catapult yourself back to second grade. The color wheel, we have three main primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And then three main secondary colors, purple, orange, and green. So if you forget, if you find yourself wanting to mix a certain color and you can't remember how to do it, just look at the color wheel and the way you would get orange is the two primaries on either side, so red and yellow, right? So the way you get green, blue and yellow. 
the way that you would get purple, blue, and red. And so we have all of these um, acrylic colors up here for you to use. And I think one of the, like, something that I get the most joy out of in doing art is really just mixing the colors. You can mix it on your palette, which tonight is going to be styrofoam plates. I'm sorry, it's not very, um, you know, earth friendly, but <laughs> that's what we have. Or you can mix it on your canvas. Um, so keep that in mind when you're mixing colors. Um, okay, so another thing to think about is what you want your main background color to be, and then what you want the layered colors to be on top. And it can be like, so, I mean, again, use your imagination. And also, you don't have to have a plan. You can just start mixing and just kind of see where your right brain takes you. But you might want to do a lighter color in the background, and then so when you layer your stencils on top, it's going to be darker, darker, darker. Or if you do a darker color for the background, just keep in mind that the layered colors on top will have to be lighter in order to show up. Okay, and the cool colors, and if you look at your color wheel, they're all kind of on the bottom here, the green, blue, and purple. The cool colors tend to recede into the background, and the warmer colors, the colors of the sun, like the reds, yellows, and orange, those pop up to the forefront. So if you want whatever is on top, your stencil layering to kind of pop forward, you might want to think about that. You might want to have kind of like a bluish or you know some of the cools in the background and then warm up front. Um, complementary colors are colors that are opposite on the color wheel. So for example, if I go back here, the red and the green, wait, sorry, I'm not very good at PowerPoint. Okay, so red and green are opposite colors on the color wheel. They're complementary. So what that means is they're basically opposite. Um, so for you know red and green, purple and yellow, blue and orange. And so if you really want to have some contrast in your design, you might want to have blue in the background and orange in the forefront. Or you know, yellow in the background and purple in the forefront. Again, just something to think about with your design if you're wanting, if you're like, this isn't working, I want something to pop out, you can use the complementary colors. Another fun little uh, trick that you can do is if you want to lighten a color, of course you can always add white. If you want to darken a color, of course, you can always add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black. But a more interesting way to make a shade of a color is to add the complementary color. So if you have red, let's say you have like a red color, and you're like, oh, I really like this, but I want to do a layer on top of that red. I want to make it a little bit darker. A better way to do that is to add a little dab of the complementary color. So if you add a little bit of green to the red, you'll get a, a color that could serve like as a shadow for that, all right? So that's just kind of something to think about. And if you think about it too, like think about all the sports teams. A lot of the sports teams have, a, you know, like the Chicago Bears, blue and orange, or the Vikings, purple and yellow, right? Are they right? Is that right? <laughs> but you know, a lot of them, like they're, they're complementary colors because it like pops out. Um, okay, and one other little tidbit because I get asked a lot, a lot of times people want to make that kind of real pretty sage, olive green, so we don't have that here. And you could, of course, add white to green, but that kind of tends to just give you a minty green. If you wanted something that, a little bit more earthy, a good way to do that, and, and if you all need help, you know, once we get going, Catherine is here, I'm here, and um, Allison is right back there. Yes, thank you. Um, but a good way to make that color is if you have yellow, and again, just add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of black and mix it up. It's, it's kind of like magic. It turns into this really beautiful, earthy shade of green. Okay. Um, so, let me see. Oh, we have aprons for everybody. We are working with acrylics. They will stain your clothes if you don't get it out quickly enough. If it gets on your clothing and you get it out with water, we should be able to get it out. Um, but try not to. <laughs> it will come off of your skin and hair, no problem. I have it all over my hands every night and it's fine, so don't worry about that. Um, I love working with acrylics because they are very malleable. You can, they're water-based, so you can add water to them and almost make kind of a wash. You can, you could potentially paint your whole canvas tonight in 30 minutes and then think to yourself, I do not like this at all, and that's fine. We could wipe it off with a paper towel, blow it dry with a hair dryer, and then start over. 
So I mean, you can paint layers upon layers upon layers, and that's also one reason why it's so fun to do uh, stencil layering with acrylics because they're very good for layering. Okay, so now I'm going to, oh, I think that's, all right. We have three different canvas sizes for you guys from which to choose. Um, and they're all up against the fireplace here. We have a 12 by 12, we have a 14 by 14, and then a 16 by 20 for those brave souls. So whichever canvas you want, go ahead and pick. Um, and so what I'm gonna do next is quickly, uh, hopefully within like five, 10 minutes, do some examples up here so you can see. The one thing that I'm going to lead you through for that I would suggest for all of us to do together is just building up the background. And so that involves these four steps right here. And I'm going to do it on the camera here so you can see, and then you can come up and get your canvas and get your paint palette, which is right here, the styrofoam plates. So my suggestion for a really easy way to start building up your background, because a lot of times too, the scariest thing about painting is just that white blank canvas, just staring you straight in the face. You're like, ah! So an easy way to get past that. So hopefully everybody has a lot of white. And if, you're, if you need more white, just raise your hands and we'll come around and, and pump some more in your palette. So this is what I'm going to suggest, is get a thick brush that's, I don't know, like, you know, we have some that are an inch or, or half an inch or whatnot, but get a thick brush. And also you guys, just keep telling that left brain to chill out. This is not exact science. You are probably not going to cover every single bit of the canvas. Like just, just again, quiet the left brain, step into the right. All right, so take the white paint, and what I want you to do is paint vertically, just from top to bottom with the white. So get a little bit of paint. Uh, can you see this? Can they see that? Okay. Um, and an, a, another common theme for the night with acrylic is less is more. All right, especially with what we're doing, you don't want to have too much paint. Uh, specifically with the stencils and the layering, you almost want it to dry, be dry. So go ahead and like start from the top and just go down. And see, it's not perfect. I'm just kind of grabbing it and going down, and then I want to use my paintbrush until it's almost dry. Okay, so you're going from top to bottom, top to bottom. You're not gonna cover the whole thing, it's okay. You're gonna have some streaks that don't have white paint on them, that's okay. Okay, so, I'm, and again, don't you don't have to go my pace. Then what I'm gonna do, if you wanna watch, I'm going to turn my canvas and go top to bottom the other way. So I'm basically going left to right and just go really quick. I'm just going top to bottom, top to bottom. So I've essentially been cross hatching this. Okay, so that is covered. The next step is you want to decide what color you want your background to be mainly. I'm going to go with blue right now because I like blue. And so I am going to take the tiniest dab of blue. Again, really, really, really small. Can you all see that? Okay. And then grab a lot of white and just mix it in. So, tell me if you guys can't see. All right, so a little bit more blue. I want it to be a tiny bit darker. All right, and you guys, for the next part with this color, again, you wanna make sure that your brush is almost dry. And if it's not, and you need to use a paper towel to wipe some of that paint off, um, go ahead and do it. Because again, you just, you don't want it to be too wet because we have a finite amount of time and we're layering stencils. Okay, so now I'm taking this, um, my blue color, and I'm going to turn the canvas again, okay? And then do the same thing, top to bottom and just go top to bottom like this. It's not perfect, you're just kind of doing it until your brush runs dry and out of color. All right, top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. Thank you. Oh, 
What's happening? Is it, can they not see? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then you're going to do that same thing. You're going to turn the canvas and go top to bottom again. So again, you're cross hashing, cross hatching. It's not perfect. And again, I'm going super fast in the sake of time. Okay. So now I have this kind of built up background going up top to bottom, left to right. It's mostly white at this point. Now, what I'm going to do is take my main blue color that I used to mix with a little bit of the white, take my paintbrush, and I'm going to dab it across the top like that. Just the whole way. And so this is the straight blue. It's not mixed with anything. It's straight blue. Okay? So that's really dark, as you can see. Now, in the middle, in your tables, you have a basket of cardboard, like kind of these little cardboard pieces, and then also these old business cards. I'm going to take this old business card and take it and scrape this paint very lightly, and like that. Okay? And then just keep going all the way across the canvas. Do it really, really lightly, and see how it's all of a sudden creating this marbleized look. Okay, and sometimes I might need to press down a little bit, but I don't want to press down too hardly because you want to keep these lines, the striations, and kind of go like that. Okay, so I did that. See how quickly I did it? Then you want to do, again, the same thing. You turn your canvas or go left to right because you're creating these lines. I'm just going straight from the bottle for time's sake and do this. So see how already you've got this really cool textured background and you haven't even picked up, you haven't done a whole lot with a paintbrush. The cards get kind of flimsy. You might need to do another one. All right. So you want to go all the way across your canvas, just scraping. Okay. Okay. So remember, you guys, the whole thing about not having a whole lot of paint on your paintbrush, okay? And again, I'm going super fast, so I, this is, you guys are going to spend more time on this. If you need to dry your canvas, if there's too much paint, just take another card and scrape again. Or we have hair dryers on this side and on that side. We have about 10 hair dryers that you can use to dry your layers. All right, so now you have a background built up. Um, you can do it with blue, you can do it with this background, for example, was done with uh, the burnt sienna, this brown color up here. All right, so what you want to do next is to start thinking about what you want to do with your design, layering your stencils. So you have your background built up. And at this point, after you have it built up, Put down your paintbrush, put down the cards, and have a sip of wine, kind of let it dry, and maybe just think, like, what do you want to do? Do you want to have stencils all over the entire background? Um, do you want to divide it in, can you see this? So like, for example, this one has a stencil pattern on the bottom, and then like the bricks on the top. So this, is almost, this almost serves as the horizon line. Maybe after that, you might want to do something like, okay, so these little business cards again, or the, the little cardboard things, they can serve really well. Um, if you can see what I'm doing here, I'm not good at this camera. I'm folding, kind of folding it into a little oval and then dipping it into the paint. And maybe I want to do like a flower. So I kind of like this, oops, this like brickish stencil because it also is reminiscent of, whoops, of um, Black Lorat. Uh, that flower did not turn out very well, sorry. Um, you can take another, the other thing that these business cards or these little cardboard things are good for are making fine lines or thick lines. 
So we'll just go with the green here. If I did want to do some flowers, maybe I can do that as my stem. You know, kind of like that. Okay, so, you know, but again, so that's a flower. That's, you, maybe you don't want to do something. Maybe you want to do something more just totally abstract. You could do, um, let's see. All right, so this is a piece that was just built up layering stencil after stencil. So some of the stencils will cover your whole page. And so we guys, we have these little sponge brushes, if you can see. Then we also have these white makeup brushes. Um, and either one of, any of these you can use to dab at your stencil. Or you can also use this brush. So for example, I'll go ahead and do this on the white. You see how you just kind of, and again, the less paint, the better. And you take it off, you can go like that. So there's that. You can do, um, we have some stencils that have actual shapes, like this is a bird. So if you want to do a bird, oh, so this is where the sprays come in. Okay, so these sprays up here, and um, these are really good. Before you use them, you want to shake it up really well. This is, basically all this is is acrylic mixed with water. Um, and if you want to see, all right, let's take, let's see. I don't know, I'll take, um, well, I'll do this one. Okay, this one is just straight. All right, so some of the stencils are 12 by 12 and they might fit against your whole page. So I might put this stencil on my whole page and then here, let's see. I'm gonna shake this up, that's black. I'm not going to use that. I'll use purple. <clears throat> so you can kind of, when you spray it too, okay, so look. Kind of spray that. And then you take it off. And voila! How awesome is that? Now, you guys, to clean your stencils, everybody, there are baby wipes on your table. So if you all can just take the baby wipe and wipe the paint off so other people can use it, that would be great. Um, now in terms of layering a stencil, so let's say I just use this with purple. I don't know, maybe I want to kind of do this and do a little bit of yellow. Because I like purple and yellow together because I know that they're complementary and they're going to kind of pop. <laughs> so let's see what happens with this. Now the spray is very, uh, it's almost like a wash. Well, it didn't turn out that well. So maybe you want to do layer this and I can do a black. <coughs> so the sprays are good for doing your stencil. You can also just use the sponges. But, and you guys, the last thing I will say is when you're, when you're thinking about doing this, think about composition. Think about, so we have some examples here, like the Kandinsky circles, that's one of the easiest things you can do and it always looks good. So we have, um, we have stencils, we have cookie cutters that you can use. These cups here are perfect circles. If you want a, perf a circle on your stencil, you can take this little paper cup Take a dabber, go all around the rim of the cup, and go like that. You can all of a sudden have circles. Or you can even just push it down on the page. You can do Kandinsky circles. You could turn these circles into flowers. Um, we have heart. We have stars. We have Q-tips. Q-tips are good to use if you are trying to do a fine line and you don't feel comfortable with a paintbrush like I don't. You can take a Q-tip and, um, you know, do kind of use it as a pencil. You can use it as a resist. So, for example, let's say like if you have this has a this is a um, a painting that has a ton of layering on it. All these different stencils. You can do white on top of it. You can do, so I did all the layering. So all the layering is on the bottom and that's what's gonna make it interesting. Then I wanna do maybe some white on top of that. 
but I want to pull some of it away because I don't want, you know, that's kind of boring. So I don't know, you can take a Q-tip and go like that. Or, you know, you could do, um, you could do really like very funky flowers that are really easy to do like that. You know, you can, and so it's almost like a resist. And so the background and the color shows through. Um, we have cookie cutter, we have star cookie cutters. This was one that was kind of just beginning that someone was working on. Uh, we have somebody, somebody was talking about doing the um, Tennessee flag. We have this, could be like a huge circle stencil, this plate. Again, you would just use your um, dabber to kind of dab the whole outline like that. And then once you press it against your plate, it comes out like that. Um, what else do we have? Oh, we have, the last thing I'll show you is just the, um, the bubble wrap, which is, so all of these, all of the tools are back there, stencils, Dixie cups, all sorts of like um, circles, things that you could use for circle stencils. And then if you look at the bubble wrap, you just kind of paint the bubble wrap like this. And you could go like that and voila. So that's something too. So it's all about just building up the background, getting pattern, um, if you want to eventually put something inside of it, like a bird or a flower, or just some circles and squares, that's great. If you just want to have fun with your shapes, that's good too. Um, all right. I think everybody's been is on their way. <laughs> Should I keep talking? <laughs> And we do, we have some stencils, you guys, you'll see, like this tree is huge. This can go against your whole page. If you do something like this, you might want to do the spray. So just play around. You might want to do the spray. You might want to do the sponge dabber. You can also, um, you know, do this brush here. If you need help, that please let us know. Allison and Catherine and I are walking around and we are here to uh, offer suggestions. So don't forget about these, you guys. These are really fun, the sprays. <laughs> Stencil for the top. And then on top of that, you can do kind of these three circle flowers. Um, and I think there's an example up here. But that is always something I think that looks really good. It's, you can't go wrong. Again, it's just, you don't even have to use your paintbrush. You know, you can use the cups for the circle, for the flowers, then you do straight lines. You can use a card for the stem, and then you can paint inside the flower. You could even use like a little sponge brush. Um, you know, like, something like that. But play around with all these fun little tools we have. And then, like, so if you wanted to, okay, let's say you're here and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't like that. Um, you could take your Q-tip and just do little circles around the flower like that. How easy is that? Or you could take a paintbrush. Oh yeah, like this filbert brush. The filbert brush is the one that's a little bit rounded on top. You could take that and that could be your, I'm sorry. That is um, burnt sienna, so it's this. Okay. Yeah, make sure you shake it up. Do you want an orange? Yeah, I want an orange. There's not an orange spray. Okay. We could probably mix one up, though. All right, so another way to make flower petals, you can take your little filbert brush like that. Just kind of go around. It's almost like you're stamping. Do you want to do one? <laughs> I would have, I guess not. 